Hey fly fishers from wherever you are, it's silk purse time of the year so here we go trying to make a silk purse out of the sow's ear that is north central Texas fly fishing and I'm here to tell you it's a real sow's ear. I have yet to have anyone present any kind of a theory or, or God forbid a fact about why fly fishing has been so weird since uh, the rains and storms and tornado all that stuff, May and June. Um, you know, I have one theory, and uh, that is that they had so much water and they drained it so quickly that it, and for so long, that it actually created current. And that's something that none of these fish in Ray Roberts or Louisville Lake, my two closest lakes, they're not, fish aren't used to current. That's all I got. If you got a better idea or you actually know what's going on, come on, man, bring it, bring it. You know, we all respect and suspect luck, the fly fishing gods and lucky charms. You know, those lucky charms of those flies dangling off the end of your leader. And, uh, you know, we have a little bit of that hoodoo voodoo going on when it comes to, and prayers to God and the, the fishing gods when it comes to trying to get something to bite. It ain't happening for me. I hope I, <laughs> let me hide it from you. Oh, it's just great. Yeah, everything is just great. No, for me it's not, and it may just be me. Maybe I've got the wrong color underwear on. You see my underwear, right? That video with the underwear? Yeah, that was kind of wacky. Didn't get much play. <laughs> but you remember I brought luck into this conversation with you guys with the new domino fly fishing game. And in that game, I've had six lakes, and I went from the, well, how many did I have? I think five or, I don't know, the double zero to the double six. So that would be like six, seven, whatever that adds up to. Dominoes, and I turned up a double four. Double four, which you will see, or nothing of, was Louisville Lake, Lake Dallas. I went there on Monday, and you know, nothing. And one of my things on that is I think that you don't want to go to a lake that's one of the most dangerous and busy lakes in Texas on a Monday because the water looked like it was still churned and I think the fish were still nervous so here's what's gonna happen double four carries over and we'll go there again until we get an honest rendering of that lake I went on Monday and I was going to go yesterday, which was Wednesday, and the storms came in, and they looked like they were building as they went south, so I went north, up to Ray Roberts. So, uh, guess what? Let's check in with the traveling fly fisher and see what happened. All right, guys, I hope you remember what the great Tom Petty said. Waiting is the hardest part. And that's what we're doing here on Johnson Branch. We're still waiting to see what the weather's going to do. We just had the sun break out a second ago. And now, here it comes again. So I don't like the instability that uh, comes with this kind of weather, especially in barometric and all that. So, and the wind's crazy. But uh, we're going to try. We're going to try and wait this out. And we'll give it a little time. And if it doesn't work out, we're going right back to the fly bar. We're going to go outside because the weather's so good. You like that, Bill Clinton, right there? We're going to go outside because the weather's so good. And uh, see what we can conjure up from the reports around Texas and... I mean all around Texas. They did a great job. This was underwater. This is their table right here. This table was underwater like this. Last time I was here, I was on my boat going around these. That was in June and it's September. So they drained this lake pretty quickly. I'm wondering if that wasn't part of the problem with this season that never was a season. You tell me. If you know more than me, that's <laughs> you probably do know more than me. I'm just here trying to make my way. But anyway, we're waiting. As Tom Petty said, let's wait this one out. Yeah, yeah. As you can see, the weather there limited my range, slowed down, 
my fishing, I had to wait about at least an hour, maybe an hour and a half for weather to stabilize <coughs> towards clearing. And there are times, there are times when this fly fisher questions his own existence. If you don't know where there are times, there are times it comes from Big Lebowski. This is one of those times, folks. I just hope it doesn't last very long. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever, 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 ever gonna happen. I don't think so. No, 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 no. I don't think so. No, 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 no. It's never, ever. I either wrote or I talked about checking the fish cleaning stations when you go to a place and you have no idea what's going on. TBWD has cleaning stations in their state parks and I went up to the northwest side Johnson Branch which was devastated by a tornado. What anybody should do if they go to the lake and they don't know what's going on. You always check the fish cleaning station to see if there's any fish being caught. Oh, that's not good. Folks, that is not good. Okay, that's your tip. Now let's talk about something different for a minute. As you may have read, I'm starting up a new fly tying group in Denton, Texas that is specifically for veterans. It will be in Denton. It will be right off of downtown on South Locust Street and it is part of the Denton County Military Veteran Peer Network. Say that three times fast. Uh, this group will be meeting uh, starting in October, but the, the group down there in Roanoke met a couple of days ago and I went to that meeting and uh, the same day I went to that meeting, my shipment from Loon Loon, you know, the people that make tools and all these other adhesives and things like that came in. So I'm very excited. I've got right now five vices from Rambler, which was Wolf. Wolf is a great company to, to help me deal with. We had a couple of shortages and a couple of things, but it's no big deal. It'll get to me tomorrow um, in the order that came to the other locations. So I got them kind of a deal on their vices down there in Roanoke as well, which is cool. The loon stuff, it looks great in the package, ready to go. And uh, I'll shoot you a picture of that and show you what that stuff looks like for the next video coming up uh, next week, the Texas Fly Fishing Update next week. But Wolf, Rambler, those guys are great. Uh, I'm very excited about this program and it's building my nerves a little bit too. I think my blood pressure might be up. I had a blood pressure question, you know? Really weird. But um, anyway, tying flies is a great way to lower your blood pressure, guys. And this new group at in Denton, Texas, you have to go through the Texas, not uh, Texas, the Denton County Military Veteran Peer network to get into this program. So that's your first stop. There's a link down in the um, description and in that description you can hit that link and go to that place and get into their program. Man, those guys down there are doing great work for veterans. They can help you get through paperwork. They can do all kinds of things that will make uh, veterans uh, difficulties they can make it a little less difficult, a little bit more, uh, I, I guess the best thing to say, less overwhelming. And you know, a lot of the, the, uh, the external programs they have are for people to just just be, just release, you know, just, just do something totally different. And if you plug in to my program, I call it mine, the Denton program, it's at the art room in Denton. So that there's more information on that and down in the description as well. Um, through the military veteran network or I, can't even, I just cannot MVPN I'll just call it that that MVPN if you can tie in you got to go through them to get in the program and didn't but the guys down there are going the whole nine yards they're going to have lessons on fly broadcasting and everything about fly fishing 
I think my focus is going to be on fly tying, and then anybody that ties flies, I can I can definitely have private classes, not private, but you know, group classes for, um, so they can plug into these trips. So there's going to be veteran trips going out, based from the Roanoke location, and that's going to be freaking awesome. So I mean, that is going to be the culmination, but. For me, I just thought I would concentrate on fly tying. Of course, I am a TPWD certified instructor, um, and that helps a lot because any hours I register here go to TPWD's matching funds. But anyway, let's look at some more stuff. Hold on, here we go. All right, guys, I forgot to tell you. <clears throat> it is September 11th, you know, and this is what I usually do to kind of clear my mind on this anniversary and uh, I hope that this break in the weather sticks around a little while. The sun was shining brightly a minute ago. Got some blue skies over there, but anyway, September 11th, 2024. Let's go get in the cove and see what happens. Okay guys, I made that little sidebar last as long as I could to put off the pain of cutting back. Let's see, let's cut back to the angler on the road you know who he is, you might recognize him up on Ray Roberts yesterday afternoon. Okay guys, let me show you a piece of habitat up here that's pretty good for uh, ambush type fish like bass and sand bass. What it is, is right up ahead, right up there, is a windblown turn into this cove. And those points like that, that are windblown, this is your tip. You get behind the wind, stay out of the wind, and then what you want to do is cast fan cast out there oh there's a fish right there it's a fan cast and uh from there you can probably pick up some fish just from the wind blowing current when the wind's blowing in the right direction so let's go take a look shall we Lots of fish action right now. Hold on, I think I need at least get a cast over here. So it's a fine line between being in the wind and being out of it. It's kind of hard to navigate when you're doing it all by yourself. But uh, it's one of those things that if you can figure out how to do it, uh, like I have over many, many years of being alone, um, it can pay dividends. So I can see the green water right there, and what happens is over this way, the sand blows off that way, and that's a discoloration. Sometimes a fish will sit outside in the clear green water and wait for a bait fish to come through that murky, sandy water. That's also a good ambush spot. We're talking ambush fish now. We're talking bass and sand bass, because um, that's what we're doing right now. Let's see what we can do with this. I've got a black clouser on. It's called the Wakanda. And Wakanda is black on black. And I sell those in my shop. Let's see. I'm seriously pessimistic. Cautiously pessimistic. Let's see what we can do here. I like the spot. Never been. Uh, nah, I don't think I've ever I've been here, but I've never caught anything here. Generally, I come at a different time of the year. I'm just kind of really, really out prospecting, seeing what, what's, what's going on, trying to find a pattern on Lake Ray Roberts. Let's see if we can do that. And if not, we'll just fade out. There's some bait moving right there, right out of the muddy water. And I'm a little bit too pasty right here, so I need to hit right over there where the water clears up. And the black on black, you want that because it contrasts against the sky. All right, this is my last cast here, and then we're going somewhere else. So let's move on, shall we? Looking at and summing up the Texas scene, the coast has been pounded pretty good, with a few exceptions, a few exceptions in geography by Hurricane Francine, which is, you know, the name Francine always reminds me of ZZ Top. Remember that song, Francine? Looking at the reports from TPWD, it looks like conditions are improving in the Panhandle Plains region. Very surprising to me, but that's what it looks like. 
And of course, that region is where Possum Kingdom, that's hanging on me like a freaking, like a dangly off the rear view mirror. I got to go there because I got voted to go there by you, the viewers. Um, anyway, got to go there. Uh, so some of those got moved up in ratings to good. I would, you know, the thing about PK, that's the only one I'm thinking about is the stripers are kind of spread out all over and I wish they would bundle up and get close together and do the whack-a-mole with me. But, um, you know, it is what it is. In my region, it looks like there is a crappie bite on the edge of timber at Bodark. So Bodark's got some interesting things going on. Go to Bodark Lake. If you're anywhere close, get it while it's young. Um, get it while, and the fish apparently have no clue. They're clueless. I mean, not that we want clueless fish for fly fishing, but hey, <laughs> and me, I do. I want clueless fish right now because it's been so hard. So the, the, I'll be honest with you, it's been pretty hard. I'm pretty frustrated, can you tell? Um, anyway, East Texas ranks good to slow. I take that for what it's worth. On the coast, I am completely intrigued by the BP. If you don't know what the BP is, that's Bolivar Peninsula, Bolivar, or however you want to say it. Cool place when I fished there in the past. I don't think I shot a video there or anything. It was really cool because it had the, uh, another cut up there, but that's gone. But anyway, it was cool. And the BP is uh, pretty darn accessible uh, by my estimation. I haven't, you know, it's been a long time. But Bolivar Peninsula for salt, excellent. The only place on the coast with TVWD reporting of excellence. So think about that for a minute. Um, way up north. You know, sometimes I wonder if the guys down there in South Texas are, are, are sandbagging us. Uh, I'm going off script guys, just like, you know, some other people do. I wonder if they're sandbagging us because uh, the fishing is always just so good down there. But if you think about the coast, you know, that, that hurricane just kind of grazed up the coast, raised the water levels with the surge. And so there could be some residual, you know, um, bad feelings for fish. Um, but a lot of times that'll push ocean born, ocean bound, ocean living, uh, bigger fish in closer because the water's so much deeper that they'll come in closer plus a push. So that's interesting. Oh boy, hill country, big water. You know, that's what I talk about when I'm talking about these locations. I don't talk about rivers at all. Hill country, big water, good to slow. So downgrade those, always downgrade those by one notch. So don't go to hill country if you're after big water fly fishing, it's not gonna happen. So now let's take a break and check back with our frustrated fly fisher. You might even recognize and see how he's found the fish mob yet. So the secret on, on throwing top waters like this is you pull it once, let it stop, let the rings of water go away and then do it again. This is really just barely a top water. It's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty waterlogged. Not exactly a corky fly. It's got some. <coughs> it's got some uh, spun hair on it, but that's, a, that's about it. Here comes the rain. Man, just can't catch a break, guys. I just can't catch a break. Golly, guys, I'm trying so hard. I'm trying so hard. This is just a little bitty rain. It's not gonna last long. I can hear it on the trees coming at me. Big ones, it's coming. There it comes. There it is. Well, here we go again. Woohoo! Is this fun or what? Not gonna last though. Alright guys, it's time for me to wrap this <laughs> it's time for me to wrap this up. 
And what I want to do, you know, I, I actually like, you know, get about five cents for you watching it. Man, maybe, maybe a penny for, for you guys watching this. But I have my own products. And if you go to www.texasflycaster.com, you will find some of my products. This is my latest thing. And these are things that I've like improved on or ones just like a, a total invention that's uh, never been done before from my knowledge. This is not it. This is just an improvement on the rod socks. This is called a rod sleeve, www.rodsleeve.com. I'll take you straight to it. Look at how easily these come off and go on. Custom cut, clear, so you can see through these guys. You can see through them and tell what rod's inside, the sleeve. So this is my take. You order it for the length you want. Any starts at six feet as far as cost but I can make them shorter if you got a shorter rod than six feet 11 foot rod 10 foot rod 13 foot rod I can make it one at a time made by me by hand here in Texas rodsleeve.com so there's other products if you get on my website and get into Pops Fly Shop which is a sidebar of texasflycaster.com it's still the same site you can look at products like artwork. You can buy products like artwork. And you can also buy hardcore fly fishing flies that are unique to Texas. Not unique, but you, you know, kind of the thing that Texas relies on, including some new spoon fly bodies that are coming out next week. Beautiful spoon fly bodies that have the right wobble you got to have wobble on a spoon fly I'm not a spoon fly fan but if you want the bodies if you want the spoon I got the spoon for you and it's small enough and it's got the, the teardrop shape to it so get ready for those and I'm gonna make them in silver for fresh water as well and we're gonna take those silver ones out and give them a go it's gonna be fun all right guys Get back to it. Let me know what you got. Let me know if you got anything. Golly, if you got questions, comments, anything like that, please watch the videos to the end. Don't forget, I have a private series of videos that you can, I don't know what they call, subscribe to. Not like subscribing here, but like membership. You can get a membership. It's $2. $2 a month. And I don't get $2. But what that'll do is that'll take you into some videos that you can only see there. They include industry, industry, industrial videos and behind the scenes in industry. And they include, um, you know, insider information on industry. They include um, hardcore step-by-step -step lessons for those of you taking lessons for the first time or learning for the first time. And then we'll be adding to those, I will be adding to those more as I get ready for the fly tying deal. So, I'm excited, I'm exhausted, and <laughs> I want to catch a fish, man. Tell me where to go. I'm doing the double four next week. If I have to do it two or three times, I'm going to try. The weather's kind of iffy for me. It's 88 today, it's going to be 98 tomorrow. Guys, have a great weekend. Make sure you like and subscribe. Watch to the end. I don't know what's on the end of this. I don't know what I'm going to put here, but there'll be something that you'll, maybe a cuss word or something. I don't know. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later. Doesn't work out. We're going right back to the fly bar. We're going to go outside because the weather's so good. You like that? Bill Clinton right there. We're going to go outside because the weather's so good.